Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel, Bass Brothers Fishing. Appreciate you clicking on this video and taking in our video today. Today I'm gonna to be working on a quick DIY project. I'm gonna be building out a rod rack and I'm doing this because space is really, really tight in my garage. So if space is an issue, uh, it's really good to try to get your rods tucked away in the most efficient and effective way possible. A one, protects the rods, you don't break them. And two, it just keeps the clutter down in your garage. I know there are a lot of videos out there on YouTube that show how to do this i'm gonna do my own version of this and hopefully you guys can get something out of this in case you're dealing with the same situation trying to figure out your rod storage just to give you an idea of my situation i'm always walking in between the boat right here moving around the garage and as you can see my floor space is really tight uh, right now i've got primarily the cast king rod stand which is actually a pretty good stand i have no complaints about that it's just it takes up too much of my floor space so i'm always moving around the boat doing stuff in here if you guys watch the channel you know this garage stays pretty busy and that right there i've really got to solve for that so my goal today is to get all of this stuff on the wall so i do have a rod lock in the boat where i do keep rods 24 7. that holds eight rods in reality i have about 16 active rods they're all rods i can choose to fish with at any given moment right now i'm thinking i'm gonna build out a rack that will at least hold 10 rods but we're gonna see i may i may bump it up so i'm gonna get started measure up this wall figure out how much space how much wall space i want to use and get going guys let's get into it the wood i'm using for this is just a simple one by four from home depot i've got one piece that'll be my bottom another one will be the top for the rods to go into and then for mounting it on the wall i'll create a base like this for mounting it on the wall so i'll put screws in here find the studs in my wall and just screw them right into the wall you guys will see all of that as well as all the tools and supplies needed to do this job so right now i have a six foot long piece because of the number of rods I want to put on this rack, I'm going to keep it at six foot. I'm not going to cut this any shorter. For you guys, cut this, make this as long or as short as you need, depending on how many rods you need to store. So this piece that I'm working on right now will be the top piece. And I want to go ahead and find center. So when you buy a two by four or a one by four, the actual size works out to be three and a half inches. So center would be one and three quarters. So I'm just gonna go along this wood, just mark my one and three quarter marks all the way. All right, this is gonna be my center line that I'll use throughout. Always measure twice, cut once. What I wanna do now is mark my holes where I'll make the cutouts for the rods. I'm just gonna start from about three inches out and I'm gonna mark all my holes and see, I think I'll get 13 rods on this six foot piece of wood. So just starting three inches in, which I think is a good, just a good spacing from the edge of the board. So how I'm doing this is just taking the hole saw and just eyeballing it, finding center, center line. That way I have this in the right place. I've got my three inch mark right there. That'll be where I start drilling my holes. And I'm gonna just trace out each hole. And I'm gonna put about four inches in between each rod. And that should allow enough space for the reels to not hit each other so I can just grab and go. All right, so this is done. I've got 13 rods on this one rack. In order to make this uniform on both ends, I'm gonna cut off this piece right here. I've marked three inches out on here as well. And just so that you guys know, the, I'm cutting three and a quarter inch off of each piece. That gets me to a completely uniform length with equal spacing on both ends of the rod rack. So next I'm gonna drill out these holes and I'm using a hole saw. This is two and one eighth inch wide, which in reality cuts exactly two inches wide, okay? All right, so this came out very good. Even, uniform cuts all the way through. So what I wanna do is mark out the holes on the bottom piece so that everything will be exactly lined up top to bottom, all right? This top piece will be for the top of the rods. I want the holes to be directly underneath on the bottom shelf. So I'm gonna just clamp these two pieces of wood together and mark my holes. So I'm literally just going to mark these out. And I could have used a hole saw and went through both boards at the same time, but I, I didn't want this drill bit to drill down into this bottom piece. I know this way takes a little bit longer, but just want this to come out right. So I'm just using the hole saw to 
create my center hole. So there you have it. That's how that looks. Yep. So here, I'm just gonna round off the edges. I'm just grabbing any random thing that I can find to create a trace out for the edge here. All right. All right, that looks pretty good, nice and clean. I'll sand all this down. So even the pencil marks, all of that, once I do some light sanding, any rough edges, pencil markings, you know, anything on the cut maybe will all be fixed in the end. From here, I wanna cut out openings so the rods can slide in and out. To do that, I'm just gonna take my square. What I like about using this square in particular is this right here is an inch wide. And that's just enough of a gap that you can easily slide your rods in and out, but yet not cut out too much of this hole to where your rods will accidentally fall out. So in the end, you'll have a little bit of a curve right here to keep your rods from falling out the rack. So because this is exactly one inch, I can just mark both sides of this. I don't have to draw a line here and then take my tape measure out, measure an inch, and then draw another line. I can literally just trace out both sides of this square. And I wanted all of mine to be in the same direction, but I didn't want the end piece to be going over towards this curve right here. So I went this way on the last one, just so that this end piece, I can have the uniform curve just like on the opposite end. So this is the only one right here that's going in that direction. All the others are going this way. And people do it different ways. Some people have half of it going one way, half of it going the other. This is just my preference, but you can do it any which way you want to. All right guys, here we go. This is looking really good. So the top of the rack is pretty much done. I wanna work on the bottom where the rods will rest. And what I'm gonna use for this is a router. And this is just my personal preference. I have it, I hardly use it. It's a great opportunity for me to actually use it on another project. I originally bought this when I wanted to hang some doors. If you don't have one of these, you can always get a spade drill bit, which will do a pretty decent job too, just to carve out enough of this wood to be able to secure your rods in and they don't actually slide out. And this is a much cheaper way to go as well. I try to get one that doesn't have such a long tip on it like this. Maybe one that just has a little bit of a nub to help keep the drill in place. That way you don't drill a hole right through the bottom of the board. Again, this is one inch thick wood and you don't wanna do that. Either way works. This is a lot simpler, probably a lot easier and definitely cheaper to go this route. All done. Got the base all routed out. So we got top section, bottom section. I'm gonna go ahead and sand this stuff down, get it looking nice and purdy, and then get to mounting this on the wall. So what I'm gonna do to mount this to the wall is just mount the top and the bottom rack onto a one by four. I'm going to flip this over, drill some pilot holes underneath and drop some screws in here. Probably use some wood glue as well and get this on here. And then I'll just drill these into the studs on my wall. First, I wanna go ahead and draw a center line here. Decided to change the color to red. Should be easier for me to see. All right, so a couple of things I'm gonna use to get this done. I'm gonna use some just regular old wood glue, put glue along here just for an extra secure bond. And I picked up these trim head screws. I got these in particular because the diameter is small and they're made for bonding two pieces of wood together, especially thin pieces of wood. And this is lightweight wood, but with it only being an inch thick, and technically it's only three quarters of an inch thick, these screws should do really well. The goal is to not split the wood. Again, with this being so, so thin wood, I don't wanna split it. So I'm going with number six, two and a quarter, 
in length. I am gonna drill pilot holes for these, maybe do three pilot holes, and that will help to ensure that I don't split the wood. Pilot holes are a great thing. I'll probably initially put three screws in, one on the end, one in the middle, one on the other side, and then go ahead and fill in the middle section. I'm doing it that way so that I can make sure that this board is centered so that if I start from left to right and start screwing, I could easily get off center line. So if I can get it center line from the beginning, middle and end, I should be good to go for the entire length of this board. I want my mounting screws to go in between each cutout here. And I don't wanna drive a nail, a screw through this because that's its weakest point. So I'm gonna line that up, make sure I have it in the right place throughout. I'm gonna load this thing up pretty good. I think I'm gonna go with a screw every five or six inches. So guys, I made my first mistake. The side with the line should be on top. So I know exactly where to screw into, but I put the side that I marked down. I just use the screws as a guide and drew straight line from end to end. So let's continue. really good this thing feels really sturdy i dropped a total of one two three four five six seven eight screws in the back so i've got a really tight bond this this came out really well all right we'll set this piece aside and do the other one all right all done came out absolutely awesome yep i'm gonna hang this up just like this so now it's time to go ahead and mount this on the wall i did pre-drill my first hole and i am installing this by myself so i'm gonna do one side and then do the opposite side and then fill in the middle. I've got my studs marked already on the wall. So it's just a matter of screwing these in and I'm done with the base. The screws I'm going with are these right here, number 10, three and one eighths, but um, these work pretty well. I used them on a recent project. I'm gonna leave that side loose for right now. So I do need this to be a little bit loose so I can tilt it up and screw on the other side. All right, so got everything in. I love how it looks and feels. Can't wait to get the rods on there. But yeah, this thing is up here and it should last a very long time. It's extremely sturdy. So I'm gonna go from looking like this to this. Absolute love this, complete space saver. Will protect my rod and reels. Of course, get them off the floor and should last for a very long time. Now, the one thing that I can't get on here is my eight foot rod. and just because it's too tall. My ceiling is only nine feet tall and I have this elevated at about maybe, I don't know, eight or 10 inches. So my eight foot rods won't be able to go on here. I only have two. So I'll just figure out something else for that. But other than that, done deal. I think the longest rod I have on here right now is a 7.3 and I still have plenty of space up top. I just can't get my eight footer up there. This was a pretty inexpensive job. I spent about 40 bucks and it really would be lower if it wasn't for COVID and materials costing so much right now. Don't worry, I will leave a list of all the supplies I use for this project in the description below. That about does it guys. Don't forget, leave a like, comment, and subscribe on this video. Help it trend on YouTube. Got another DIY project coming up on the channel next. I found a solution for how I'm gonna get the e-propulsion 200 pound lithium battery in and out my boat because I do plan on taking it in and out while I swap out between motors. So stick around to the channel, that video is coming up. And also long awaited, I'm gonna be putting together a video doing a two year review on my John boat. That's gonna be an absolute awesome video. I'm gonna give you things that I like about the build, things that I would change. I mean, I'm gonna go in deep on that video. So that about wraps it up. As always, we appreciate each and every one of you for following us and supporting our channel. Till we meet again, we'll see you on the next video.